All right, we're here at Rigs and Techniques, and today we're talking about kingfish. You know, kingfish are one of the most uh, sought after fish, and you get to do it a lot, Steve. It's Steve mm -hmm. Grant from Diamond Fishing Products. He gets to fish in a lot of kingfish tournaments, so he knows a lot about catching great big ones. I fish for kingfish to catch a couple small ones for the smoker. I, that's what I like to do with them. <laughs> They're not that, you know, if you catch them and- they ain't worth any money that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you, ca if you catch them and, and cook them the day that you catch them, they're mm -hmm. pretty good to eat. If mm -hmm. you smoke them, they're pretty good to eat. You know, it's not a fish that you want to put in the freezer uh, unless you're like a really strong taste in fish. And some guys do, you know, some guys love that. You know, the strong, they grew up on fish sticks and you freeze a kingfish and they love it. But you know, I, I like to smoke them and, and stuff like that. Kingfish so, makes the best dip. You know, exactly. And, and a kingfish, he's a mackerel fish. He's got tons of teeth, just like a wahoo. And uh, so we have to use a lot of wire to keep them from breaking us off. And, you know, they just have such incredible speed. They're mm -hmm. made for speed. So a lot of the stuff that we use has a, a built-in stretch and, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. correct? You know, yes, sir. When you want to um, try to alleviate that initial burst of speed and then hopefully when he shakes his head and gets closer that we have a little bit of play but when we're usually now in the summertime the kingfish have moved up onto the beaches usually if the water's clear if they have a really clean water and there's a lot of bait then the kingfish will be in there and we can target them trolling the old traditional way with with some nice uh, uh, down riggers and stuff like that just trolling plugs and whatnot but your specialty is catching great big kingfish. Slow speeding. Correct, with mm -hmm. live baits. So, so the nice thing about uh, what you were talking about doing planers and, and spoons and stuff is you can cover a lot of ground. Right. Okay, but if you know where the fish are, um, we want to catch a bigger fish than you and the guy next to you and the guy over there. Right, maybe we'll start so, this way to locate the pod or something. That's, that's something that you could do. And what, what happens when you find that? that mother load of big fish that you're looking for. You sit there and you fish until you catch the biggest one possible. I got you. What are you, what's your favorite baits to use? So my favorite couple baits, especially in the Texas area, is going to be a nice big hardtail between like 12 and 18 inches. Um, and really, as far as big baits go, there's not a big enough bait. You know, as long as you can actually troll it on your, your equipment that you have, uh, right. then you could pretty much catch, you know, th that's how you catch the 50, 60 pounders is trolling big bonitas or big hardtails. But if I had uh, some nice hardtails or a ribbon fish, I'm happy. I won't go anywhere king fishing without ribbon fish. Usually right. in a tournament day, I don't like to leave the dock with at least, I want to have at least enough dead bait that I could pretty much troll the entire day in case I was unsuccessful catching live baits. Right. So, um, and I'll tell you, we'll talk about a couple little tricks since we mentioned ribbon fish. Correct. Okay. I have here one of my little tournament rigs and on my ribbon fish, I like to add a skirt, whatever skirt that you want to put on there. That's fine. I custom make my own. Okay. And a lot of people don't like using jig heads. Um, I actually, I prefer to use a jig head because it helps write the ribbon to troll. Because he's a very thin, long bait. Very thin, and sometimes they want to spin, and they can be a little bit of a pain to troll. that jig head makes him go straight. That jig head kind of keeps his head down, okay? And the other thing we were talking about earlier is, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can put the hooks, and I didn't bring a ribbon fish with me. Mm -hmm. um, some people go down the back or the, or the spine of the ribbon because the, the back of the ribbon's a little bit darker, too, so sometimes they think that the hooks kind of hide in there. I actually prefer to take them and I slide them down the side, okay? That the reason being is I'll lay it in the water and if it has any type of a slow spin to it you can take the ribbon out of the water and put the hooks down the opposite side and it'll act like a straighten rudder. Straighten them out. It'll straighten them right out. Okay because if, if you have a ribbon fish trolling right up and down he's gonna catch he's gonna catch a kingfish. Now you showed me another cool trick before real quick about mm -hmm. doing the loop to loops with your long rigs. Well I'll show you first of all go on, let's talk about hardtails for just a quick second all right now this is the uh, the long rig. <clears throat> Now with these with these hooks, okay, you can see how if I jiggle it just a little bit, uh -huh. they have a lot of dance to them. Right. Okay. So the way we do that is we actually we tie the hooks together doing a loop to loop, and I can show you in ten seconds if you want me to. Go. You got ten seconds. All right. So you start from the front hook and go to the back, and then when you attach your 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 trail hooks, you simply take your wire and you go loop to loop before you tie your haywire twist. And we'll right. see how quick I can tie a haywire here on. Television. <laughs> well, the key is, is that instead of putting it through the hook, when you're you, actually putting it through the very first loop that you attach that first hook with. Exactly. And then when you have it all loop to loop to loop, all your hooks are jiggly jangly. 
So when you put it this way, the hook's allowed to dangle because when we're, when we're tournament fishing, I want, if I have three hooks on the rig, I want three hooks in the kingfish. I don't care where it is. His mouth, his head, his back, his tail, as long that's as we beautiful. got it. That's, that's worth it all right there, just that little tip right there. Well, appreciate right, it. We thanks, gotta, thanks, buddy. We gotta go, guys.